send me a message. We can book a meeting and we can brainstorm. So what's your business? What is it that you do? Okay, so my company was called Spark Imports. Yeah. And I love the name. Love oh, the you. name. Thank you. Um, so basically, all right. I've been in business for a very long time. Um, I am, my name is Alex, firstly. My nice name is to Alex. Meet you, Alex. Um, so I've just moved to Sydney. I'm, I'm originally from Melbourne. I'm born and raised in Melbourne. I come from a Lebanese background. Oh, there's a toy. Yeah. There's no one talking. I went and just mute them. Cool. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Um, so I just moved to Sydney about five years ago. When I moved here, I, I, I totally changed the industries. Um, I am qualified as a civil engineer. So I come from a construction background. Um, I stopped doing that. So when I relocated to Sydney, I you know, circumstances changed in my life. I just wanted to scale down a little bit. And I ended up purchasing a, a tobacconist. So it started off as a tobacconist, you know, stores that sell cigarettes. Um, and, you know, I turned that store around. I turned it into a really good business. I initially bought it for 120000 five years ago. I sold it um, one year ago for $750,000. We've done really well. We took it from, you know, making hundred grand a year to $5 million a year. It employed five full-time people and um, being in this, being in the, in the retail industry um, and being in the game, we identified a need in the marketplace for um, smoking accessories. Um, I felt like there was a big gap in the market um, for like really cool lighters in particular. So that's where it all started. So my very first product was just a really cool little um, jet lighter. I don't know if you can see. Uh, sorry, it's my phone. And you're selling it online through e-commerce, so you do TV into stores. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's Muhammad Ali, but he's doing that jump man type of um, the Michael Jordan jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. Yeah. So this is like a common trending design, and they come with all different types of famous characters. Um, and this is a trending type of design. There's many other designs as well. We've even got some rappers on there. You know, Elvis <laughs> Presley, Michael Jackson, all this type of stuff. And it's just a windproof lighter. Yeah. I ordered 100,000 of these lighters when I first started. You don't play small, do you, yeah. Alex? <laughs> yeah, we ordered 100,000 um, units uh, about two years ago from China after having attending the, the World Expo over there. Not quite sure if anyone's familiar with the World Expo that happens twice a year in China. It's so good. They actually run it out of Vegas now as well, once a year. And it's basically like a, a one or two week event. And every day... You know, one day is like a technology day. Next day could be, you know, homeware stuff, various goods. And you meet all these manufacturers and everyone's trying to sell you this stuff. Really cool place. Anyway, so we went there, we found the manufacturer and whatnot, and we produced these lighters. And we started off selling 100,000 lighters in three months. Today, we're selling about a million lighters in three months. So we scaled up, we have five. Yeah, what's your biggest um, stress and productivity challenge at the moment? So while I'm talking, I can think about your business and how I can help you. So why well, do you go today's workshop on productivity and stress? What, stress absolutely. You feel? what time of the day do you feel mostly stressed? Why are you feeling stressed? And absolutely. what are you struggling? What are the areas you want to be more productive that you're struggling with? Yeah, for sure. So for me personally right now, I'm in B2B. We're in face-to-face. And we are fully restricted with, you know, this lockdown here in Sydney. I'm not quite sure if everyone's from Sydney, but it doesn't matter. I think, it's spreading, yeah, I think about it's spreading to Queensland, about Melbourne, Sydney. everywhere again. I think it's a really big problem that we're facing. Anyway, and um, this has really affected my business and it's causing a lot of stress, not just, you know, on me, but on my employees. I employ five full-time sales representatives. Three in Sydney, one in Melbourne, one in Queensland. I also have an operational manager as well. All of the COVID areas at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this has created a lot of stress. I exercise regularly. I've just started meditating. Boy. Although I'm, I'm a little bit confused about the whole meditating thing, but I okay. understand the importance. I don't think I've added meditation to today's workshop, but I can do another one on the whole wellness and meditation because that's something yeah, that's that really very important. Oh. And I'd I don't think that. you've come across this business. It's called Aura Bottle, and they do these bottles with crystals. 
And it's just beautiful because then throughout the day, because you're not going to meditate all day, but throughout the day, you're just drinking water where you put an intention. It just reminds you to calm and be less stressed. So they do them in different shapes. And Elise will share here on the side a little bit about the business. So she'll put the Instagram. So I've used like little things and I've got rocks to shoot calm because you can't meditate all day. But it's just about putting little reminders. But yeah, I'll talk a little bit. I'll try to squeeze a little bit of meditation in. What else are you doing? So meditation, exercise, enough yeah. sleep. Lots of reading. Good. Oh my God. Ellie, we can be friends. Oh uh, my God. Readers and leaders, Paula. Readers and leaders. Awesome. Oh, cool. Thanks for sharing, Alex. I'll get started now. Oh my God. This changed my life. I've got a pile of books. This changed my life. I've got a pile of books next to my bed that it keeps on falling out. There's over 50 <laughs> books. It's ridiculous, but it's so good. Problems of leaders. Cool, guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Alex, for sharing a story. I can see we've got lots of friends, and I can see that we've got some familiar faces from overseas as well. Hi, I can see Matthew from Enroll AI as well. Hi, Matthew, Rowan. How's everybody? So I'm going to be sharing the slides with you guys today. There's a lot of content that I've put in here, but you guys, if you want a copy of the recording, you can just send us an email. And if you want a copy of the slide, it's our gifts to you. So remember that, hi, Matthew. Um, remember that everything we do is for you guys. So thanks for joining. Oh, nice to see you, Matthew. Nice to see you. Pretty smile. So let me get started here. And then um, I will try to get through this in about, let's hope, oh my God, am I sharing the screen? Yeah, in about 30 minutes, so I can take right. some questions afterwards from you guys. Okay, um cool let's get started cool okay so today we're going to be talking about how can we reduce our stress because automatically when we're able to control our stress we're going to be happier more productive so everything is going to flow better um so this is one of my favorite topics and personally i think oh and Elise, can you mute whoever's talking um i think like personally i do like i never get stressed but i do have a lot of anxiety but i've learned mm -hmm. to listen to the thought so that I can maximize my productivity because uh, that's very important for us as business owners. So for those of you that aren't connected yet, please connect with us. This is um, our Academy of Entrepreneurs Instagram and Facebook page, but I've also put my personal Instagram and LinkedIn. And I know that a lot of you guys are already connected with me and we chat along the way. And some of you guys that don't know face to face, but please connect and I'm here to help you guys. And let me know what else you guys wanted me to talk about. Because I try to no, put live amazing. on a webinar once a week so let me know what you guys want for next week and so forth and i'll help you guys so remember that we can, we can, so for those of you, and elise can you please mute everybody um yeah. for those of you that aren't talking okay. please mute okay. yourself but please leave your camera if you can on because it's nice talking when i can see smiles right. and people interacting and just having a reaction so i thought i'd divide today's talk on stress and productivity into different steps uh, Thank you. Thank you. I think, I think that's Eliana, isn't it? It was Eliana, yeah. <laughs> Eliana, just because you're the consul, you're forgiven. Um, okay, so today's um, yeah. workshop will be first around happiness. So first you need to go deep into yourself and see what makes you happy. Because until you haven't figured out what's going to make you happy, you're not going to see the importance of reducing your stress. Then we're going to be talking about stress. How can you control? Where does stress come from? And how can we reduce it and learn how to control it? Then we're going to be learning about um, the productivity mindset. So how can we have a mindset that we're always continuously trying to be 1% better every day? Then I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of the tools that I personally use. Obviously, there's different tools that will be more beneficial for different businesses. So I'm looking at the overall, you guys as leaders, as entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, what you can use. And then finally, we're going to be talking about health, which is something that Alex just spoke about. Because for you to be successful as an entrepreneur, you need to look after your health. So I personally think that if you're looking out to your happiness and your health, and you need to be a tiny bit selfish, your happiness and health is so important. Because when you're happy and healthy, your team will be happy and healthy, your clients will be as well, and the whole world wins from it. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys lots of my personal tips and some activities as well. But 
for us to have an impact, you're going to have to take action. And this is why we're always saying at a camp you need to boss your future. You are the owner of your future and you can achieve everything you want, but you need to take steps. You need to try and see what works for you. But at the end of today, I hope that even if it's just one activity or one mindset that you're going to embrace into your life, you need to embrace a little something and action it for you to get results or else it's just information. So let's talk about happiness. Um, so it's very important for you, for you to do what you love every day. The more you do what you love, the more you are going to be productive. And you're probably wondering, like, what does happiness have to do with stress and productivity? It's because life doesn't go according to plans. We've seen, and I don't need to talk to you guys about the challenges that we have on a daily basis, but the reality is that life is not linear. It's full of up and downs and on a daily basis. So unless you're not doing what you love, the light at the end of the tunnel is not going to shine. And success also is not linear. Sometimes you need to go sideways and a little bit backwards for you to be able to go forward. So it's very, very, very important that you're doing what you love every day because the more you do what you love, the more you're going to be fueled with energy to overcome any challenges such as controlling your stress and boosting your productivity. Because this is what it is in the life of an entrepreneur and a leader. We start really excited and then there's challenges and things start working and then we make a mistake and then it's up and down. And literally it's a roller coaster all day long. Sometimes I have all of these feelings in an hour and I am 32 and I've been an entrepreneur since I was nine. <laughs> so it's just part of life, there's challenges and we've got little voices in our heads. So it's just about us learning how to control that. And the reality is that 1% of the world controls 99% of the economy and that 1% of the world works on improving themselves. So good on you for joining us today because you can only improve every day. And it's by reading books like Alex was talking about, it's by coming to webinars, it's by challenging ourselves to be 1% better that we are going to be placing the 1% that helps the other 99% of the world. And it all comes down to action. So step one is for you to understand your brain. Your brain is your biggest asset, but it also is your biggest enemy. So your brain has thousands of thoughts. Depending on who you speak to, they say that we have around 50 to 80,000 thoughts a day. But 80% of the thoughts we have are negative and 95% are the same as the day before. That means that no matter what is happening throughout your day, your brain is always going to be rewired towards negativity for you to survive. In the past, we lived in a jungle, in the cave, we were running from lions in the middle of Africa, but that's not a reality right now. But our brain to keep us surviving is rewired to always go the negative way. But every time you go negative in the way of thinking, it attracts more negative thoughts, which increases your stress and reduces your productivity. So I'm going to be teaching you guys some tricks. And obviously, the brain has got muscles. So the more you start rewiring your brain towards becoming positive, the more you're going to be able to do. But it's not going to be like in the next hour that you're going to go from being stressed to reducing your stress to zero. That's impossible. But these little activities, if you start bringing them into your life, miracles will happen. I, like, it's just guaranteed that you're going to be start. The more you choose to be positive, the more positive, successful, and productive you're going to be. So you need to make the choice of every time you catch yourself having a negative thought, you push it away and say, get out, don't enter my head, leave and never come back. So you need to identify, you need to capture it and push it away. And that's what stress is. So it's very normal to feel stressed. And we all have bad news. Who here, just right here on the chat box, who here has ever received bad news? Who here has received bad news in the last 12 months? Just type yes. It's just part of our everyday. Now, how you deal with it is what separates you from being a leader and being productive to everybody else that goes in panic mode and stops reacting and sometimes even takes steps. No so... What would you do if you're on the way to the best meeting of your life and then you go outside to get your car and you realize a tree trunk fell over your car? What would you do? Automatically, you stress, you panic, you think this is the worst day of my life. This is the sign. Today's going to be a disaster and I'm going to cancel the meeting. Of course, it's going to be a bad day. And this is how most of us tend to react. Any little thing bad that happens, we quadruple it in many seconds and we keep on repeating the message. Remember, 80% of our thoughts are negative and 95% are the same as the day before. 
So it's very normal. So don't, don't put pressure on yourself for going, oh my God, I react like this. That's fine. You now know how your brain works and now it is your choice to push it away. So next time you have any bad news, small or big, my suggestion, I learned this through a dear friend called Carrie Phipps. She's an amazing author that talks about positive mindset, growth mindset, positive intelligence and emotional intelligence. And she talks about the post-it notes technique. What do you do? Whenever you need to remember anything, you put on a post-it, right? You go, reminded to order something at the supermarket, reminded to do this, reminded to do that. So you need to do the same. The next time you have something really stressful happening to you, and that is not allowed to stop you from progressing, being positive, write it on a post-it. If you don't have a post-it, write it on your phone. If you don't have your phone nearby, write it on a mental post-it. It doesn't matter. And then capture and turn that into something on your to-do list for later. Because let's go back. If you've got the biggest meeting of your life organized, your dream job interview, the best investor in your industry wants to talk to you. If you're on the way to talk to your best customer and sell them a three times bigger contract, don't let the tree trunk ruin your day, your life, your strategy. Just put on a post-it and just go fix car when I get back. Take a deep breath, put a smile on your face and go and focus on the target of the day. Is it easy? No. Is your brain going to rewire to remember the car? Obviously, yes. But with time, you'll learn how to strengthen your brain. I have had so much bad news coming to me, so much. And I just go, post it, I'll deal with you when I'm going to deal with you. The car has the tree trunk. Fixing it now or fixing it in 24 hours probably won't make that much of a difference. But going to the meeting can change your life, can change your client's life, can change the world. So learn how to prioritize and learn how to identify, manage, and control your emotions. Stress is a choice. The tree trunk is a fact, but the fact that you're stressed and not focus on the target of the day is your choice. And you can learn to strengthen with time your brain towards prioritizing. There are facts, there's challenges, and there's the right time to deal with everything. So learn to use this post-it. If you like things physically, just maybe start carrying a post-it in your handbag or inside your wallet if you're a guy. But use this as a reminder that challenges will come ahead, but it's about you being able as a leader to prioritize and say, this is my goal. Am I going to let the tree trunk, which is a problem, stop my day and ruin my plans? No, I will deal with it at the right time. Not easy, but it is possible and will give you such good results. And that's why you guys always see me through Instagram and LinkedIn talking about emotional intelligence. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. And before I opened Academy of Entrepreneurs, I interviewed a thousand entrepreneurs to understand what makes someone successful. And 100% of entrepreneurs say that the most important skill for you to develop continuously, it's a never ending learning skill, is emotional intelligence. So Google emotional intelligence, subscribe to every podcast, order every ebook, listen to every talk on YouTube. Emotional intelligence is something that we all have within us, but we all can improve every day. And it's a four step process. It is the choice of identifying, managing and controlling your emotion and the emotion of others. So identifying, I'm stressed, there's a tree trunk on top of my car. Managing, choosing to manage, controlling, which takes a lot more energy, your emotion. And when you calm, everyone around you will be calmer and that's gonna pass on to others. When you're stressed, the same is going to happen. And this is why sometimes we walk into businesses and we see a really rude manager and then all of the staff around them are really rude and unhappy because it's contagious. So it is your job as a leader to strengthen your emotional intelligence every day and get better at it. And it's easy, guys. Just read books, come to these webinars, strengthen your brain, but make it your choice to identify, manage, and control your emotions and the emotions of others. So I'm going to do a little activity with you guys. It's really quick. Get a piece of paper, get your phone, it doesn't matter. And over the next 60 seconds, write down all of the feelings that you remember having. We have thousands of feelings. So we have over, so we've got around 80,000 thoughts a day. Every thought rewires us and triggers a feeling. What are all of the thoughts? So a minute before you came into this webinar, what feeling, what did you feel? 
when you had breakfast, when you had lunch today, when your laptop ran out of battery, when you made a sales phone call and it converted, when you made a sales phone call and someone didn't pick up, when you posted on Instagram and you got lots of engagement, when you sent an email and you realized you made a spelling mistake, when you looked at your to-do list and it is five o'clock and you haven't even done 5%. What are all of the feelings you remember having in the last 24 hours? So right now, for those of you that are in Sydney, it is 5.35. What happened at 4.35? What happened at 3.35? What happened at 7 p.m. last night? Oh, Carrie, I can see you. Big hugs. Oh, what a nice surprise. So what are all of the feelings you remember having in the last 24 hours? Okay, so keep writing it. Don't stop. And I'll give you guys another 20 seconds. And I'm not going to see it. You're not going to share it with anybody. But it's just important for us to acknowledge all of the feelings. Okay. So do, 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 do. I'll give you guys another 10 seconds. Cool. So now we're going to go into step two. Count how many feelings you remember having in the last 24 hours. And guys, there's no wrong answer. This is just an activity. And it's an activity that I recommend you to do throughout the day with your friends, with your team. If you are a school teacher, run this in class. How many feelings did you record on your piece of paper or on your phone? Now, count how many were positive and how many were negative. I'll give you guys a few extra seconds. And there's no wrong answer, guys. This is just us. Remember step one of emotional intelligence, identifying. We're on step one, we're identifying. Then step two, managing. And then step three, controlling. We're on step one. Okay, so what happens? It is normal for us to have more negative feelings and positive feelings because our brains are naturally designed to be negative people like carrie phipps and i that live and breathe entrepreneurship and emotional intelligence we have more positive thoughts every day because we've learned how to rewire our brain but it took us many years to do this a lot of studies a lot of coaching a lot of books endless learning and we're still working on on it every day. I have coaches that I speak to every day. I read books every day. Even on TikTok, my whole algorithm is around being positivity and mindset. So it, it's just us strengthening the muscles. So what happens and why is this so important? When we have negative feelings, emotions, and thoughts, it narrows our thinking. We don't see the big picture. It narrows our thinking and it starts repeating. It limits our understanding of what is happening. It reduces the way we process information. It causes us to be very reactive and often into fight mode. It shrinks us from opportunities. And also, have you noticed, like, if anything bad happens, you repeat the story again and again and again and again and again, sometimes for days in your head. So it has a more lasting effect. Now, if I give you a chocolate bar of your favorite chocolate, you're going to love me for a few seconds. But in a minute, you won't even remember I gave you the bar of chocolate. And that's just the way the brain is. It just stores negative data in our brain and reduces our performance. However, when we are positive, which is a choice, when we have a problem, we get really excited about solving it and we have lots of ideas for it. I love, for me, I love days full of challenges. Like it gets me so motivated. It gives me so much energy. You're more willing to find solutions because you just get addicted to this energy of you're an entrepreneur, you're a leader, you're an entrepreneur, and you're going to find solutions. It causes you to have a more engaging behavior with your team, with your clients, because you're going to be more interested and you're going to get better input towards solving it. The more positive you are, the more you are willing to take risk. Positive people, and this is why you see entrepreneurs, they're always happy making really big decisions. The people like that are conservative and on the negative side, they just go, you crazy. And we're like, you're crazy for not trying it out. It causes you to think more deeply, strategically about solutions. It gives you more options. And it also increases the dopamine level, which helps you be more interested and helps you learn faster. This is why emotionally intelligent people succeed and are happier. Because we are still, we still have a little bit of stress. We still have negative thoughts. But as soon as we capture it, we push it away. We understand, we analyze it. And if it's not adding value, we push it away. Now, if we are in a situation, so say there is, I don't know, a car crash or a fire, 
obviously we're going to feel the same emotions, but we're not going to let the fire and go in panic mode and stay there. We're going to go, how do I find solutions? So the more you can rewire your brain or strengthen towards positivity, the more you will succeed and faster. So stress is a choice. It is your choice to feel stressed. And there's different techniques that you can use to reduce it. But step number one is to do what we've just done, is literally identifying. So how do you identify your negative thoughts? I'll give you guys a little tip. Get your phone out and put a timer and every 30 minutes, get your phone to beep. So if you wake up, let's say at 7 a.m. and you go to bed at 10 p.m., get your phone to beep every 30 minutes. And every time your phone beeps, stop and pick up that thought and analyze, is it positive or negative? And then as soon as you capture that thought, you have to make the choice and action towards pushing it away and have a positive thought. Just look at anything around you and be grateful for one thing, two things and three things, and you will see that all of the negativity will go away. And with time, once you start doing this after a few days, it's gonna be naturally you're gonna have more and more positive thoughts. We all, no matter what circumstances we are today, we all have a lot of things to be grateful for, but we need to rewire our brain to see that. So if your brain is not continuously on positive thoughts and actions and reactions, just put a timer on your phone and literally make a big 30 every 30 minutes and start analyzing your thoughts. And every time you analyze your thought, capture it and make a decision. If it's positive, great. If it's not positive yet, tell it to go away and rewire it to be positive. And remember, it takes 21 days for you to build a habit and 90 days for you to build a lifestyle. So it's not in the next 24 hours that you're going to be in a 100% flow of positivity and productivity. But the more you rewire your brain to be positive, the better results you're going to have. And that leads to the next topic. So first topic was you choosing to be happy. Second one is understanding stress. The third is, okay, how can I be more productive? Because the happier we are and the less stressed we are, the more results we're going to get because we're listening to our reactions and we're analyzing how can we become more productive because reality is that we only have 24 hours a day but it also we have 24 hours a day so how can we make the most of the time so you've got enough time to exercise eat something delicious or healthy whatever your choice is grow your business grow your career do what you love make your team happy make your clients happy so how can you have more amazingness in your life so a little secret being busy does not mean you are productive. I see this all the time. I get phone calls like all the time. How are you? Oh, so busy, so busy. And I'm like, what are you doing with your life? And it's people that I've known for years and then they're still stuck. And I'm like, what is this in the world that people love saying that they're busy? Life is not about being busy. It's about being productive. And actually the more productive you are, the less busy you are because you need thinking time. So don't Catch yourself next time you say, oh, I'm busy. Oh, life is hard. No, 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 no. Push it away and just go, how can you be happy and productive? Being busy does not mean productivity. So another activity that I love doing that I had this amazing coach doing with me a few years ago is literally see what is happening in your day. Get a piece of paper and write down all of the tasks that you love doing. And on the left side, write all of the things that you absolutely dislike doing. And you will see all of the things that you do as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as a student, everything that you love doing, you get really good results. You are productive and it puts you through the state of flow. The things that you don't enjoy doing feels like forever. You often don't complete it. It stresses you and it doesn't help you become a better person. And then look at this piece of paper and just go, what is it that I love doing and I do so well? How can I do more of that? And the thing that I don't like doing, can I outsource? Or can I block 30 minutes first thing in the day and get it done with? My mom's always told me, don't do tomorrow what you can do today. If I have anything to do, I do it on the spot. And a few of you guys know me at a personal level very well. I just get things done. In the middle of the meeting, I'm like, just wait a second. I don't wait. And especially if I don't enjoy the thing and it needs to get done, I just do it straight away. So instead of having the negative thought reminding me that I have to do it later, no, go away. Let's focus on being positive and productive. So as an entrepreneur or leader, you need to analyze. And honestly, even if you've got a full-time job and you don't work for yourself, you can outsource things. I've got a friend that has a very influential person in politics and he's, 
he didn't he wasn't given a budget to do a project he just got his own money and hired someone on the site to write up these really hard finance reports they had to do and he said it was so much data entry and data he just got it and he just got someone else to do it so this freelance is sometimes for five ten fifteen dollars you can get someone to do it on the site so just look at your day and just go what is it that i enjoy doing that gives me really good results and how can i do more of that because the more you're doing what you love the faster you're going to get results and just focus set goals set smart goals that are achievable and you can get there so every day organize your day your day your week your month your quarter your year your decade and be set smart goals that are specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound so case of alex maybe he wants to go from one to two million sales in the next six months is it possible yes it's possible how's he going to do it how's he going to measure how's he going to achieve it is it relevant maybe it's not relevant it's not achievable in the next six months you'll need eight months because we might be stuck in lockdown for the next five months and you'll need three other months but how do you structure your goals? And that's the whole thing. I've seen so many people, oh, I want to lose 30 kilos in a week. Is that possible? Obviously not. 30 kilos in a year? Absolutely. But you need to have goals that are relevant, that are achievable, and you need to put a time towards it. So organize your day so you've got smart goals. What are the goals? So today, right now, it is 5.46. When you woke up this morning, when you turned on your laptop, what were your goals for today? What was on your to-do list? What did you want to achieve? Guys, it's almost like three quarters of the day gone. Time is money. Your health, your happiness is so important. Your productivity as well. So organize your day. Maybe just write the word smart on a piece of paper. And every day when you wake up, you just write a smart goal in a sentence. And that is your goal for the day. Because it's better that you achieve one goal than have a million intentions and not get anywhere. And that's a big mistake that a lot of people make. It's like, they're not working towards anything and they don't feel like they feel like they're going in circles because they don't have a goal. But if you've got a goal, you can break it down, but make sure that it's achievable so you can celebrate your wins. Next thing is know who is in your team. And if you don't have a team, if you've got freelancers, that's absolutely fine. If you don't even have freelancers, that's fine. Go on Fiverr, go on freelancer.com. There's so many websites, there. but see what is it between the piece of paper, the things that you love doing, the things that you don't love, what are the things that you love doing? Obviously, continue doing them because you're probably getting really good results. But look in your team and just go, what skills do I have in my team? Or what skills do I need to bring in that can complement me so I can achieve my SMART goals? And that will combine both the skills and personality, actions and attitudes that your team brings on board. This morning, I had a couple of very interesting meetings with some really cool projects. And I had some people mentioning things in the, in the project and I knew exactly who to bring for what meeting. I knew exactly how to structure the project to make it successful because I know everything about our team and I want to learn more about them every day. And I want to help them achieve their goals. And I want to help them improve the skills so we can all achieve our goals. But you need to know who you are as a leader and who do you have in your team or who do you need to bring in? So it's very important. So imagine, remember with emotional intelligence is to identify, manage and control your emotions and the emotions of others. And you need to do the same with your team. Every person has this unique way of living life. They value different things. They have different skills. They have different mindsets. So how can you bring your team on board so that together we can achieve our goals? Is it easy? No. Human resources is definitely the hardest part of every business, but it is possible when you have really strong mission, vision, values, and goals, and you're hiring the right way, and you are aware of how everyone in your team is important and unique, you can support them individually. So um, if you want some activities, just send an email to, and Elise will put the email here. I think it's probably best that you guys send it to contact at aestudy.com or info, and then you guys will get a copy of the ebook. Next step is for you to learn to say no. And it is very hard when you are starting your career or you're a student on your first job or you've just started your business, saying no can be very hard because you feel like you're going to lose opportunities or you're going to be seen as negative or you're going to lose money from it. But the reality is that the more strategic no's you say, the more space it leaves you to be less stressed, be more productive and more focused and achieve all of your goals. This is a beautiful quote from um, Steve Jobs. 
It's by saying no that you can concentrate on the things that are really important. So Steve Jobs didn't go out and launch 100 products every year. Did he have the team and the money to do it? Probably yes. But would he have been successful as he was launching a product at a time? No. So you need to learn how to say no. Alex has gone from one industry to going deep down into a product. that He's just super focused on that. And his product stands out from everybody else. And if he focuses just on selling lighters, he will become the market leader, not just in Australia, but the whole world. So the more you focus, the more you can master the world, the better you'll be able to get. And it's by saying no that we will be able to succeed. The more you say yes, the more you're going to be stressed, the less you're going to achieve, and the more you're going to be demotivated. Because there's nothing worse than going to bed, looking at your to-do list, and knowing that you haven't achieved anything on it. Or looking at your day, just go, what have I done today? I didn't even have a to-do list. Because some people don't even have a to-do list. So please learn how to say no to things that aren't important so you can concentrate on the things that are important. Now, let's talk about tools. So I'm going to share, I mean, I use probably like on a daily basis, at least 10 different tools, but I'm going to share with you guys some of the things that have worked really well for me and it requires like no setting up, like it's just so easy. So the most powerful tool you have to be productive is your diary. This is not my diary. This is how I structure my diary. This I pulled it out of Google because like my diary looks a lot more chaotic than that. So my suggestion is divide your day. We have seven days in the week. Let's look at Monday to Friday to begin with. But you also put a little bit of energy on a Saturday and a Sunday because when you love what you do, you're still thinking about your job, your business, your growth, and so forth. So my suggestion is divided into, let me just move this. Thing. So divide it into days. So if you are an entrepreneur, what are the different departments that you need to look after in your business? If you work for someone, what are your goals and what are the different skills and actions you're going to have to use? So say, for example, you do sales. You can't be all day warming up leads. You need to have time to get leads, warm them up, close them, and potentially even pass them on to admissions or operations team. So if you are all day in sales, just cold calling, you're not going to get anywhere. If you're all day just focusing on closing sales, what happened next week when you've closed all of the sales? You've got nothing on your pipeline. So it's important for you to go, what is it that I want to achieve? Am I a chef? I can't be cooking all day. I can't be posting on Instagram and TikTok all day. I need to be ordering stock, designing my menu, posting it on social media, managing my team, looking after the stock, building relationship with suppliers. So how is it that you're going to manage? Different industries will have different needs. But this is just an overall idea on how you can develop. So if you are an entrepreneur, you might want to do Mondays, you organize your operations and you speak to all of your team. Tuesday, and then you can send reminders for people they want to meet with. Tuesday, you could spend the whole day just doing sales. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to continuously develop new products. So maybe on Wednesday, you're going to be speaking to people and organizing and brainstorming around new products. Thursdays, you could be doing partnerships, speaking to the media, speaking to suppliers, strengthening relationship with previous customers so you can continuously have them as customers. And maybe on Friday, you can look at human resources, stretch who else needs to hire and how else you can help your team perform better and what you can do with finance. I love on Saturdays at Account Entrepreneurs, Lewis and I, so Lewis is our operations director, Lewis and I sit on a Saturday for two to three hours online and we look at our Gantt chart and we see how we are progressing with all of the projects and we just complete little tasks. And then every Sunday, no matter what, I prepare for the rest of the week. And I have my me time that I just go, what happened in the last week? What were our biggest wins? What are my goals for the next week? And how can I put the right operation, sales, product development partnership? So I did this for many years to organize. And now it's just become normal. I'm at a stage at the moment that I manage five businesses. So within Academy Spinners, we've got five different verticals. So every day I've got a different vertical that I focus on. So I'm no longer looking at departments. I'm looking at verticals. So see what works for you. If you manage a business, that could potentially work for you. If you work in sales, how much time you're going to be getting leads, warming up leads, converting leads, and looking how you can automate. If you work in cookery, like we said, or if you're a yoga instructor, how much time do you need to be sending out invoices and posting on Instagram and doing a new course so you can develop better skills, networking so you can speak to the media or get more customers. So look at your industry and just go, what, what is my goal? 
what do I want to achieve? What do I need to action? And how can I add that to the right day? For example, there's not really a point of doing sales meeting on a Friday afternoon. No one wants to talk to you or pass you the credit card or sign up an invoice on a Friday. And Monday, they're still warming up. But Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays are great days for it. So also know how to structure. So for example, if you're going to be selling something to someone in hospitality, during the day, they're so busy, they don't want to listen to you if they're managing a cafe. But when they're about to close the cafe, that could be a good time for you to start a conversation with them and maybe help out, help them pack while you are talking to them about business. So understand what are your goals? How are you going to get there? And what are the right times for you to put these blocks for you to achieve it? So on top of all of that, what I've done with my diary is I've chosen colors. So I personally, I love Google Calendar and I've got everything integrated between all of the, everything on the cloud and all of the devices that I use. So I've used colors. For me personally, I think health is very important. So I've chosen the color purple because of the whole chakra and the purple is so important. Um, green, I've used for sales. Blue, for all of the staff meeting. Red, off for urgent things such that I really need to drive or finish or sign this contract or so forth. Pink is my to do's, my favorite color. So all of the little to do's that I need to do, I've put it in pink. And gray are projects that have been paid and I need to deliver because it's already been paid. And I need to do maybe, let's say, a, like a presentation or develop a new product for them. So what I've done is I've organized my diary to have these colors. So when I open my diary that day or throughout the week or the month, I can see the balance of colors. And my goal as Paula is every day to have as least amount as possible of red. Make sure that I have at least one purple thing because I love my meditation, my yoga, my running, my spinning. Green, I want to make sure that I have at least two sales meetings every day because we need that to grow the business. Blue, that I'm giving enough time to the team. But obviously, I can't be meeting with the team all day long because I don't have time for my health or to look after sales. Pink are all of the to-dos and gray are all of the things that I finished. So those are the colors that I chose because they just resonate with me and my lifestyle. So going back here, the way you structure your week, I can help you guys. Just message me on LinkedIn or Instagram if you need any tips. But for every industry, for everybody will be very different. But I, I love just looking at my diary and seeing everything blocks according to the day and the colors and the balance. Nothing makes me happier than seeing this nice, beautiful balance with obviously no red, hopefully. But for example, today, 20 minutes before I jumped in today's webinar, I put red and it was called prepare. And it was a reminder that no matter who called me, I had to review the slides, get myself in the flow of everything else out. Now I'm gonna be fully focused to be here with you guys on time. So that was the red. So it's not red as in like alert, urgent, but it's just a reminder that now is the time for me to prepare to log in on time because we had the webinar starting at 5.15. So yeah, so that's really worked for me. And I'll give you guys another tip. Remember we were talking about having the 30 minute reminder on your phone to capture your thoughts on the time and rewire yourself to be more positive. Use that also to complete tasks. So for your calendar and every 30 minutes on your phone is gonna ring so that you can work in blocks because if you start opening emails throughout the whole day or replying to whatsapp it's a trap you're never going to get out of it so you put blocks on 30 minutes for email, 30 minutes for sales phone call 30 minutes for productivity one hour for exercise but put these blocks in we you can uh, put these blocks in so that you can organize and be as productive as possible because the more you know yourself, the more you're going to be able to achieve. And this is why when you meet a leader, you just go, wow, they know it all. No, they've developed techniques to help them be happier, more productive, and achieve the goals. But you need to connect with yourself. What is it for you, Alex, that you need to do to be productive? What is it that Matthew needs to do to be productive? What is it that puts yourself through the state of flow? What are the different hacks? These little tools that I'm showing you guys is what really works for me. But maybe you prefer to put everything on Trello or Notion or Asana. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's about how you use your time and these tools. So there's no point of you spending the next day using Trello or Asana to put all of your information and you're not going back to using it or you using it and your team not using it with you. So it's very important that you've got a centralized place where everybody can work. 
Final topic is looking after your health, which is what we call biohacking, is learning to listen to the sign. So biohacking is you learning to understand how are you feeling and how can you be more productive but feel better every day. So it's being the best version of yourself. And I love a word that we always use in the entrepreneurship world, which is the flow. What puts you through the state of flow? Because throughout our life, the most amazing moments that we've achieved the most, we were doing what we loved. And then when we completed the task, whether it was like an amazing soccer game or, in, or we baked the most delicious cake or we coded the most incredible app for a startup, when we are in the state of flow that we just look at and just go, oh my God, where did the day go? Will the last three hours go? Or someone just takes a bite of the cake and just go, wow, you bake the best cakes in the world. Whatever it is that puts you through the state of flow and productivity for your business or for your career, that's what you need to be doing. So you need to go, how can you rewire yourself and understand what songs am I going to have around me? What food am I going to eat to make me feel good? Because often we think that like, I don't know, a packet of chips will make us feel good, but then your tummy gets sore and then you get tired and your productivity drops. So this is why you see a lot of people looking after the health should be able to look after the business. So the music around you, the food, that you eat, the people that you hang out with is so important. I only hang out with really happy, positive leaders. If they're not happy and positive, I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you are. I don't want that energy around me because it's all contagious. So you need to be very careful. So there's another activity that is part of the ebook um, that I've shared with you guys that you guys can email to get a copy. And in that ebook, it will ask you, what are the top 10 achievements you have in your life? So write down right now, what are the top 10 achievements you've had in your life? Whether it was getting into university, graduating from university, the biggest client that you signed up, the biggest company that you set up, the biggest awards that you won. What are the top 10 achievements that make you the most proud and excited about? And then it's about thinking, what state of flow, what put you in the state of flow? What skills were you using? I'll give you guys an example. I am the biggest multitasker you guys will ever meet. I'm in a meeting thinking of three other things. I'm sending a text message. I've got three screens in front of me and a phone. Like it's just insane. And I used to think, and my brain can multitask really well. And I'm a fast thinker. And I used to think that multitasking was the best way for me to do things. I naturally multitask and I can do it. But for me to achieve the biggest things in life, I am single tasking. And by doing this activity, I realized that my top 10 achievements, I completed them when I was by myself, either in a hotel, in a business trip, or in a lounge at an airport with no distraction, no one that I knew around me, without a phone connection, without internet on my computer, just writing down notes and developing a strategy. My biggest achievements in life were actually when I was by myself, super focused, not when I had hundreds of people walking around distracting me. So what do I do? Every time I want to be super productive or work in a massive project, I do what I call my airplane mode days. I just switch off and no one can contact me because I need to be able to focus. Lewis from our team, to, for him to be productive, he needs really loud music. So he comes in with a headphone and he loves having noise around him. And for some reason that makes him be productive. So whenever he needs to work in a big project, he comes with his headphone, sits in the middle of chaos and just works. And when he works from his house, he's a lot less productive because he enjoys the movement around. It gets him excited that he left the house, that he's not in his pajama, that his kids aren't around. So what is it that puts you through the state of flow? And how can you put yourself more in that? So for me, things such as crystal bottle with lemon inside my water, that super helps me. The right music. When I want to run, I use a different song to when I want to be productive. And sometimes when I really, really, really want to work, when I work on detailed things, I don't even have music around because the music will also distract me. So what is it that you can do throughout your day to be able to be productive? And I can give you guys a list, but you know what works for you and start paying attention. So when your phone rings every 30 minutes, just catch him. What is my thought right now? What is my level of productivity? Am I focused? And make sure that you are completing the tasks. 
So I organize my day in 30 minute blocks and every 30 minutes, I just super have to focus. 30 minutes, you guys will see. If you message me on Instagram, 30 minutes, you get a lot of replies. And then sometimes you won't hear from me for another 10 hours because now it's not Instagram time. My WhatsApp, same thing. Sometimes you'll get like a hundred replies from me and then you won't hear from me for another 24 hours. And I also organize my WhatsApp that I reply to Latin American messages twice a week, European messages twice a week, Southeast Asia three times a week, because I know that people can wait for an answer. And I know that that puts me through the state of flow. Right now I'm thinking in Spanish and I'm gonna reply in Spanish. Right now I'm thinking of Southeast Asia and these projects are interconnected. So how can you put yourself through the state of flow to be able to predict? What are the skills that you're using? What is the space you're in? Music, kids around, noisy neighbors. What is the zone and what are the feelings that you have? So is it doing a yoga class that makes you be more productive? Is it going for a run at the beginning of the day? What is it that works for you? So I've got my top 10 favorites, but I'm only gonna share a few with you guys. For me, nothing makes me more productive and happier than starting the day with a yoga class. And it could be on YouTube, but I like listening to someone, not me telling myself what to do and running minimum 30 minutes. So I wake up. And if I get those two things done, no one can stop me. If I worked crazy hours the night before and I have to jump out of bed quickly into the shower and go into a meeting, my productivity won't be the same because I haven't done my yoga and my running. So this is me and my body. Now, when it's super cold or windy like today, I have a bicycle that I cycle because I need to get used, like I need to waste my energy, but I don't want to be cold because that will also kill my productivity. And this is me, Paula. Some people like doing their, I don't know, martial arts. Others like just the meditation. What is it that gives you energy right at the beginning of the day? Another thing that I love is my bulletproof coffee. So I do my coffee with a spoon of coconut oil. Some people do it with butter. And the combination of the coffee with the fat just gives me a lot of energy right after I've exercised. Another thing that I have that really helps me with productivity and also with sleep is I have installed this thing on my laptop called Flux. So it's a free plugin that you put and then you can tell what time you wanted the screen to go darker and the screen starts going orangey. And that helps us not be sucked into the computer because the computer throws so much energy. And then when you go to bed, you still feel like you're awake, even though you're tired. So Flux, and you can, if you've got um, an iPhone, your phone will also do it automatically with the iPhone. The Apple products do it for you. But it just helps you reduce the amount of light being thrown in your face. So at the end of the day, you don't feel as tired, but also it will go darker throughout the day, which means it will hurt less your eyes. So when you go to bed, you, it, you're not as agitated as you are from a normal white screen. Another thing that I personally love is sleeping. The more that I sleep, the more I am productive. Right now, this week has been a crazy week. So I know that I'm sleeping less hours, but what did I do? I slept all week in last week and like literally the amount of hours that I slept last week to cover up because I knew this week was going to be crazy. And I've already blocked my Saturdays and Sundays so I can sleep in. So I've learned to balance. In my dream world, I would get eight and a half hours of sleep every day. But because I work with the whole world, it's not always possible. So what I do is I block little chunks. And honestly, sometimes... I just sleep throughout the day, especially now in the lockdown. I just cancel a meeting and I sleep for 30 minutes or an hour if I feel like I need the energy because that will help me be more productive and feel better. And another thing that I recently learned, I've always had the habit of being grateful. I'm grateful for everything. And throughout the day, I see the beauty, all these little things. But I've recently learned from Ush and Yuka from our team that when you are grateful, you, your brain can't be in the state of anxiety at the same time that it is grateful. So next time you kept to yourself being stressed or with too much anxiety, get a piece of paper and write down all of the things you're grateful for. And you'll see by the third thing, your brain is no longer stressed. So that's another great way because you'll see your breathing will slow down. Your smile will be bigger and also your anxiety and stress will slowly fade away. So that's been a very powerful trick used as well. So talking about being grateful, I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. Let us know how we can help. If you want to succeed faster, and I know that each and every single one of us are here because we want to succeed faster so we can do more amazing things around the world. 
book us a phone call or a coffee with us. Um, here are our contact details. So just send an email to contact at AE study or send a direct WhatsApp or a message or a phone call to this number. If you are or overseas WhatsApp. And if you are in Australia, you can straight away call us or send us a message and we'll call you guys back in whatever country you're in. And we can book a phone call to help you succeed even more. If you want a copy of today's presentation, just send an email to contact and we'll share it with you guys as well. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, comment, share so we can grow our movement and impact more people so everybody can be less stressed, more productive, happier and make the world a better place. Little reminder, um, this Thursday we're doing an amazing event. I'm bringing to incredible, very emotional intelligence leaders that have had businesses that have to super pivot during COVID and they are succeeding every day. So we're going to be having a 30 minute chat this Thursday at 6 till 6.30 Sydney time where we are going to be, so we're going to be asking them questions and this is your opportunity to ask them questions as well around how are they succeeding, how have they pivoted, how have they managed stress, boosted the productivity and also aggressively increased their sales over the last few months, even though there's all of this happening around Sydney. And remember to boss your future every day. You've got the power of achieving everything you want to. Stress is a choice. Productivity is a choice. Happiness is your choice. Your profit, your success, everything is a choice, but you need to take action. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will stop sharing and then we have another five to 10 minutes and I will take all of the questions. Mr. Matthew, oh, Eliana, good to see you. So guys, what questions do you have? What can I help you guys with? Lucy, Sana, how can I help you guys? What did you find the most interesting from today or any questions or any challenges you currently have? No, too much information? Yes, Eliana. You hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> My God. Okay, hi, Paula. Uh, so lovely to meet you, to see you. Uh, sometimes uh, I have my calendar and I have so many goals, so many things that I have to do in the same day. But, but I have learned that not necessarily I have to do everything. Otherwise, I'm going to end up super stressed. So I think that the best for me is just to prioritize. But uh, doesn't it happen also to you that some days you have to do so many things, so many things that you really need to do? How do you feel? How do you do those days just to not end up really really stressed there are days that are crazy there's days that are crazy and there's days that you planned everything and something really big happens and you have to stop everything and focus or fix that so that is normal the way that i do is i just write down so what i've done is i know what we need to do on a daily on a weekly basis and so forth and then i break them down into 30 minute tasks so i just go i know that if I open, look, if I open right now, um, my WhatsApp right now has 317 messages that I've received today. My email has, how do I see how many? I don't even know how to see. My email, oh, I don't even know because it goes plus 99. So my email has probably another 700 emails that I need to reply today. So if I open my email and I start doing email, I could do emails a whole day and I wouldn't finish my emails. But what do I do? I block two hours in the evening and <laughs> what I'm like a machine. I look at my laptop and I'm like, game on. And I start deleting. Everything that doesn't look interesting, I delete. Everything that I know that I don't need, like that I'm copied in, that means I don't need to do anything and I delete because there's some other stuff that's copied in and I'll let you deal with it. Anything that came to me and is not within my department, I flick through. And before I used to flick through and put a comment. Now you can call me rude. I call it productive. I just flick it through. So if I receive someone asking me something about sales, Annalise, if I have a student asking me for an assessment extension, I just send it to Louis. I just flick things through. So I sit and I just do WhatsApp. And you know that, Eliana, you know me very well. You'll message me and sometimes for two days I won't reply. But when I reply, I'll reply da -da 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 -da, lots of things. And then I'll come back in three or four days later because there's a days that I speak to my friends in Sydney. There's days that I speak to business. There's days that I speak to. So if I'm organizing, for example, Easter for you to come to my house, I will be messaging Easter. But
But if it's a work related thing, as much as I love you, if it's Easter, now is not the day or vice versa. So sometimes my friends will be asking me like, let's go out for wine and da 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 da. But it's a work day, I'll respond just to the work messages and they're like, hello, but when are we gonna have a glass of wine? And I'll be like, I won't even reply. But then two days later, when it's my, let's organize the social agenda, I'll remember the names and I'll go in and reply. So that's what I've learned to do. So I've learned to super focus. And another thing that I've learned, Eliana, is to not feel bad for not completing. So if I put myself 30 minutes to reply to all of the WhatsApp, I've got a timer. Whatever I replied, congratulations, you got a reply. If I didn't reply, just contact me again if it's really urgent. Because when it's really urgent and you haven't replied, people will get back to you. They'll remind you. So today I had two people sending me like, oh, Paula, little reminder. I'm like, thanks for reminding me. But it was the right day to reply and I replied. And I'd seen the email through just the title, but I knew it wasn't the day that I was going to deal with them. So I haven't done with them. I've learned also to say no to meetings. So for example, Wednesdays are the days that I work on high school projects. Thursdays are the days that I work with offshore. So I don't care what government. I don't care if you're the Pope, you're the president of a country. If it's not a Thursday, if you're overseas, I'm not dealing with you. I don't care. Every Tuesday, I've left to do webinars around the world. So I'm here on a Tuesday and tomorrow morning, which is Tuesday in Latin America at 8 a.m., every Tuesday from 8 until 9 a.m., I'm doing a workshop for Latin America. And this is my promise. You can't touch those hours. That's it. <laughs> so, and it's crazy. The more you say no, the more yeses you get because people start respecting. So if someone really famous just goes, can I have a meeting with you? I'm just like, mm, I only take meetings on a Thursday. They'll be like, wow, she values her time. I'm going to value my time and her time. So I'm going to show up to the meeting prepared. Another thing that I've started doing is not approving any meetings where I don't know what the meeting is about. Because people just go in and say, phone call. I'm like, what is this phone call? And I don't care if you're internal staff or external project. I don't care who you are. When I'm sitting with you, I am sitting. And Eliana, you know me well. When we go out for dinners, if we go for a walk, I do not answer my phone. And if I'm going to answer my phone, before we start the walk, I'll just go, I know it's rude, but I need to keep my phone because I'm waiting on one phone call. As soon as this phone call is done, it's done. So when I'm with you guys right now, I'm with you guys. I don't have my email or WhatsApp and I'm here with you guys. Anyone could call me. I wouldn't even see it because I'm here focused. So I've learned to do that. And whatever's not completed in 30 minutes, that's okay. I've learned to do that. So I've put blocks. So I've put blocks according to the different businesses that we manage. Fridays are the investment day. So all I do is I look at after our investment. So if anyone needs to speak to me, so sorry. Saturday, I'll skim over my emails. But on Fridays, I don't even open emails on Fridays. So I've organized like that. And, but it all, it will, you will succeed first if you know what you're working towards, what is your goal, and then just being strict. Put the timer, say no to people, and just focus. Yeah. So that, that's what I do. Yeah. Cool. Mr. Matthew, what questions do you have? You have a big startup with technology and artificial intelligence. What is happening around the world, and how can we help you be more productive? Hi, thank you. Just, no, I don't have any question now. Just I learned a lot and thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You know, you used to Elon Musk inspire me, but now you inspire me. <laughs> it's a good achievement for wow. you. Wow. <laughs> I feel honored. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Cool, guys. So thanks for joining. Um, let me know where you guys want to learn from me next. Um, you guys, most of you guys have my Instagram, and a lot of you guys even have my WhatsApp. Just send me a message, Instagram, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, wherever it is that you want to reach me and send me ideas on what else you guys want to learn about. For those of you that speak Spanish, tomorrow morning, I'm doing a whole session from eight till nine in Spanish on emotional intelligence. So it's about different tools and techniques, but it is going to be in Spanish. So for those of you that speak Spanish, head over to Eventbrite and you can sign up or else I'll see you guys next week. Big hugs, lots of love. Let's be less Thank you so much. Productive. Bye. Big hugs. Bye.